Here's Jason Sanders now to get this one started, and we are underway in Foxborough. And he'll be stopped up at the 25. So now the Patriots getting set to take over on offense. They'll be led out by their quarterback, a product of NC State. It's Jacoby Brissett. Spent the early years of his career bouncing between starter and backup as needed and played well, but never had a team fully commit to him as their guy. He does retain the toolbox that made him projectable as a starter. Big, strong player with a powerful arm, deceptively mobile and tough to tackle. The best part about his game, leadership and being a great teammate. Brissett going to go to the air right away. And his throw is going to be incomplete. Oh, I like the calmness of how he played the ball here. No panic in his eyes as that throw arrived. Tracked it from the moment it left the quarterback's hand, and that's just where he needed to be to knock it away. An incomplete pass leads to second and 10 from the 25. Here's Brissett. Open man is Kendrick Bourne. And he's upended at the 33, following a good pickup of eight. Nothing flashy there, the slant to the slot. Oh, and the frustration for the defensive guys, because it's a quick play. And you know it's going to be a bang-bang play in terms of the throw and the catch. And then he's able to absorb the contact and complete it. An early test, two plays in. This is third and two. Brissett, that is caught. And he will have a Patriots first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. So opening drive, third down, they go with a slant, it works. And I'm wondering when the league's gonna figure it out because everyone throws it on third down. You expect pressure, so you want the ball out of the hands of the quarterback quickly. It's a three-step route ordinarily, and you're throwing it where you see the receiver breaking towards you. So it's an inside route. Everyone likes it, and it's executed very well. All right, rifles one, and that's gonna be intercepted. Picked off by Anthony Walker. And he will bring it back. It's a pick six and a Dolphins touchdown. So a big defensive play there on the opening drive, no less, as they make the interception and bring it back for the score. And I think that's a signal for how this defense wants to play. They want to be disruptive, and you know they're going to take some chances. Well, sometimes it can burn you, but right there, it paid off. Jason Sanders now for the extra point. And that makes it 7-0 Dolphins. A heck of a play there defensively, getting the interception, navigating his way into the end zone for the touchdown. So they throw the pick six. They'll get another shot at it now as this one's in the air. And a good return as he'll be stopped just shy of the 30-yard line. So back onto the field come the Pats for their second drive. First and 10 and kind of tipping their hand at running the ball. Three tight ends are out there. They'll run it. This is Ramondre Stevenson. And tough going there as he'll only get it up to about the 31. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. Well done to sniff that out defensively. He had it diagnosed pretty quickly. I love that description because diagnosed is perfect on that one. Read his keys, made the play, and he couldn't even get going moving the football. Brissett now. Hunter Henry brings it in. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. 
13 yards on his first catch. It's a first down as well. First down pickup by Hunter Henry, and that's something he's been doing throughout his career. He's produced at least 35 catches of 400 receiving yards in all but one of his previous eight seasons, and the Patriots are certainly hoping to see more of that and then some in year nine. He'll get this complete to the rookie from Washington. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight-yard gain, second and two. We've seen quite a bit of the short passing game here early on first quarter, haven't we? We have, and I think it works a couple of ways for, for this team because, number one, you throw the short game until they stop it. And if they're not going to stop it, you keep throwing it, and occasionally you'll break a tackle and turn into a bigger gain. Also, if they start to creep up, start to pressure receivers, now you go over the top, take it deep, and now you get some of those big shots downfield. Good work after the catch. Gets him 15 and a first down. Of course, the catch was nice, but how about what happened after? Able to stay on his feet and gain all that additional yardage. So many of these slot guys, I think, have running back in their background. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. Play action now. Brissett. The improv on the scramble there gets him six, and it'll be second down. You know what I like about that play? He didn't try to do too much on first down. He took what the defense gave him, put together a solid gain to bring up second and manageable. Now they have a couple of plays to pick up just a few yards and a new set of downs. Ball on the 27. Here's second and four. And that flag accepted. Still second down. Following the delay, here's second and nine. From the shotgun, it's percent. And his throw here is incomplete. We know it's not an easy job to go out and catch passes when people are trying to tackle you and knock the ball away. But the bottom line is, that's a pass he's got to have and a pass he should have caught. Now they got to get to the 23 here on third. Brissett sets to throw it. He's got his target. That's complete. And he's got another first down as he's brought down at the Dolphins' 19. That one goes for 13 yards, and it moves the sticks. That's a play that will likely be forgotten when you talk about big moments in this game. But plays like this are critical to keep drives going. And if points result, we'll call this play significant. Now Brissett. His throw incomplete. So many offenses want to include their running backs into their passing offense and be able to swing the ball out or check it down to them. But sometimes those guys are just not as comfortable catching the ball as they are running it. Now a second and ten. And here's a give to Gibson. He'll get forward for three down to the 16-yard line. Well, that call makes sense because they've been throwing it well on this drive, and once again they show passing formation, showing the shotgun. Then they ran out of it. That's a nice play by them defensively, though, to hold it to a short game. Here's third and seven. To throw is Brissett. Pushing through the contact. And the Patriots are going to have first and goal as they try to finish off this drive with six points. Oh, man. Just when the D thought they had the answer for him, he went and changed the question. Surprises him by taking off himself. He's able to set up his offense pretty with a first and goal. To throw, Brissad. Finding Bourne here over the middle. And he's in. Touchdown, Patriots. Kendrick Bourne, a nine-yard touchdown grab. And the Patriots are within an extra point of tying up this ballgame.
Bouncing back nicely from that bad opening drive where he threw the interception. Drive number two leads him right down the field and into the end zone. So obviously his confidence was never lost, and that's a good thing to see. Great quality to have, and you absolutely must maintain that as a quarterback. But I have to think that they're probably still on the script that they prepared for this game. Just the second drive, they've worked on these plays all week in practice. Put them, in, put them to good use on that one. Extra point by Sly is up and good, and we are tied at seven. So that one a long 11-play drive. And it was Kendrick Bourne who was able to cap things off with a touchdown. So I'll leave it at seven now as they kick it away. And he'll get it up past the 20 to about the 22. Here is Tua Tungavailoa heading out to lead this Miami offense. If you ask coaches at any level to design their ideal leader of a team, I think they're going to check every box with this guy. He's got the poise to handle responsibility. He stays calm under any kind of pressure. And he brings out the best of his teammates each and every week. of Iloa and the Dolphins come up first and 10 at their own 22. The play action fake. They'll look to throw. He'll swing this out to Mostert. It'll be a gain of just a yard and it'll be second down. All defenses worry that whenever anyone catches the ball and has a head of steam come out of the backfield, it could turn into a big play with missed tackles or he runs through people. But they were right there waiting, and they stopped him for a minimal gain. From the 22 now, here's the second and nine. In motion, Hill. They'll run here with Raheem Mostert, and he'll manage only a couple here up to the 25. The completion on first didn't get much, and now the run on second doesn't get a whole lot either. Well, if you're a good play caller, you've already looked ahead and anticipated this type of situation. Already down in his play sheet, trying to dial up a big third down play. Out of the gun on third down, here's Tua. Able to find the open man, that's complete. And he is going to have the Dolphins first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. I know this may be jumping the gun a little bit, but 7-7, seven to seven, they're flinging it around like crazy. Look at the drive that's going on here. Partner, we may have to start thinking about one of these defenses just holding someone to a field goal and maybe trying to get an advantage that way. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. Here's Tua. He'll get this to his tight end. It's Janu Smith, and he's going to be out up around the 45-yard line. A Miami first down, that one going for a gain of 11. Well, that tight end position, it just seems to continue to evolve every year in the NFL. Yeah, you're getting really terrific athletes. A lot of them maybe were wide receivers at one point. They continue to give you speed, great hands, and big bodies, which make them excellent targets for quarterbacks. And he'll take this one up close to about the 45. There to stop him, Juwan Bentley. That's a nice job there defensively, being able to diagnose that little touch pass. They saw it coming, converged on him before he could get much out of it. They work now on second and nine. And again, it's Tunga Bailoa. Another catch there for Waddle. And he's got another first down as the tackle's going to be made at the Patriots' 44-yard line. Give him 11 yards that time and a new set of downs. Well, that's not just his first, not his second, already his third completion here on the opening drive. And I, I think it's safe to say that getting him the ball in this game, one of their top priorities. And a top priority for the defense has got to be finding ways to cover him. And I don't think you can have one basic coverage to get it done. You have to throw a number of coverages at him, make him think as he's running downfield, and hope you can create a little bit of havoc. That'll give him eight that time, and that'll bring up a second down in just a couple. Yeah. 
Tua going to throw. He's going to look for Beckham in the end zone. And that is caught. Touchdown, Miami. Odell Beckham, 37 yards. And the Dolphins have taken the lead. And partner, they found a gap there on the post pattern, and it was in the middle third of the field. And that's really difficult to do because ordinarily the safeties are back there to prevent that happening. But they found the opening and exploited it. And we remember, of course, all scoring plays need to be verified upstairs. And I think they're going to at least take a look at this. They're taking a peek at whether or not those feet were in bounds, and obviously a big call here in the end zone. And not just the feet. How about the hands? How is the ball possessed while the feet are hopefully getting down in bounds? That's what they're trying to look at to see if it all comes together. After review of the play, the ruling on the field stands. So they called it a touchdown originally, and this will stay a touchdown after the video review. So they had it right. Sanders now to add the extra point. It's up and good, and it's 14-7 now here in the first quarter. So an eight-play drive covering 80 yards. And it's OBJ, Odell Beckham, who ends it with a touchdown reception. Now after the touchdown, ready to kick it away is Sanders. And out a little across the 25 to the 27. New England's offense set to go. For this offense, Charles, remember the last time they were out here, marched it nearly the full length of the football field, and a lot of the attack went through the air. So now they're seeing if they can duplicate that performance. Okay, if I show my age a little bit, partner, because I can hear my high school coach, John Ford. I can hear his voice in my head. Laddie, when you put the ball in the air, three things can happen, and two of them are bad. But the way the game's being played now, this is just part of what they do. So I don't think they should change anything at all. They've been dominant. Keep throwing it around. Yeah, that one drops down incomplete. Good coverage there. Forced the ball free, and it's second down. From the gun, it's Stevenson. And he'll push his way forward to about the 32. They get six. That'll leave them with third and four. I think we can safely say that those types of plays are the backbone of this offense. We know not every run's going to be a big hitter, but you know they'll take that type of result on each and every attempt. Third and four. Here's Brissett. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he will have a Patriots first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Would it be safe to say that as precise as routes are supposed to be run in the NFL, maybe they're not quite as precise in college ball? That's accurate, yeah. And I think we saw a college route in the NFL there. Just find the soft spot, find the dead zone, and find the first down. And that's what he just did. Brissett. Now this complete to Polk. It'll go down as a gain of six, and that's going to bring up second down. Nothing fancy on first down, but a very consistent type of a play. Hit that slant. A lot of people call it an extension of the running game, and it can be if that pass is completed, because you hit a guy on the run like that, he often can go for big yardage. Sets him up nicely for second down, staying ahead of schedule. Fancy footwork in midfield. And he's across midfield and into Miami territory. On any running play that's called, they're always hoping that it's going to break big and go the distance. But when you get a nice game like that, you're able to do so many things anyway. You can come back and run essentially the same play again, continue to move the ball on the ground, or you can decide to throw the ball now because usually you have the defense back on its heels throwing Brissett and this pass broken up 
Uh, the contact well timed there and now fourth down. Good defensive call right there because they had someone shadowing him along his entire route. And he was right there ready to provide a hit that prevents him from making another catch to his big start. So on fourth down, here's Bryce Beringer on to punt for the Patriots. Braxton Berrios deep for Miami. And no return possible here as they angle this one out of bounds. So Miami coming out for their second drive. The last time out, they had to march almost the full length of the field for their touchdown. So here, much easier, Charles, with this better starting field position. I love your sarcasm, but I love even more your observation because, look, what they did last time out, now with a shorter field, they should have a lot of confidence that they're going to put more points up on the board. They'll start on the ground with Mostert. And he'll get what he can up the middle, three yards. That'll bring up second down. Look, all any running back wants is a little bit of room, a little bit of space in order to maneuver. But he also understands how difficult it is for his offensive line up front. So if they give him any space, he realizes his job to make more out of it than what they give him. Picks up three on that carry. Through one corner, 14-7 our score. It's Dolphins football here as we begin the second quarter. Ball on the 40 now. Here's a second and seven. Tua sets up to pass it. Open man downfield is Waddle. He's got it. And all the way in for a Miami touchdown. Jalen Waddle, 60 yards. And the Dolphins are able to strike quickly to add on to their lead. And he showcased his blazing speed on that one. Was he wearing football cleats or track spikes? <laughs> because he was gone. Big time play. And just think about what that does if you're a receiver on the team with him. Well, that's got to open things up for you as well. Because if I'm a defense, I've got to get back deeper and deeper in order to keep him in front. But I'm not sure how many can actually keep him in front with that speed. Sanders on for the extra point. It's good, and it is now 21-7. to Pretty clean and simple there. Just two plays, the long pass resulting in the touchdown on play number two. Now after the touchdown, ready to kick it away is Sanders. Sheds off the tackle. And it's a pretty good return here as he'll get this up to the 29. Out comes the New England offense to see what they can do this time. Defense got the better of them last series, forcing a punt. See if they make a few changes in the game plan here and try to get points out of this drive. First and 10. From the gun, here's Brissett. Got his man complete over the middle. It's Douglas. And his play caller does a nice job of giving him an easy throw to start this drive, and he takes advantage of it. The completion sets up a manageable second down. Ball on the 36 now. Here's second and three. Here's Brissett. Give him seven on the tuck and run, and it'll get him a new set of downs. As he came to the line of scrimmage, he knew he didn't need much to reset the chain, so when he saw the space he needed, no hesitation. He went to the marker and got his guys a first down.
Brissett. And that is incomplete. Oh, the coverage a little too good there, and it's second down. Well, it hasn't been a banner first half for the defense trying to cover him today, but they'll take that one right there, helping force that incompletion. Here's second and ten. Out of the gun, Brissett. Got the connection here to Bourne. That'll leave them with a third and two coming up. They got eight yards there. I always laugh when people say, what's the toughest route to defend? And I'm like, any of them, especially if it's a good receiver, that makes things very difficult. But when you're running a drag route, something short, shallow, going through defenders, using guys almost as, as screens in order to get open, that makes things tougher, guys trying to get to the football. And he will have a Patriots first down as they get five there on third and two. And that one was a lot of fun right there because that was the game within the game. Third and short, blitz was on. What's the key for the quarterback? Get out of your hands in a hurry. And that was a quick little completion. Got the job done for a first down. On first and 10, it's Gibson. And he's going to take this ahead for right around three yards, but no more than that. Second down. Yeah, I don't know if it's exactly a win-win, but if you're on offense, you'll take that kind of a run, all right? It was kind of stacked up, found a little bit of yardage, and frankly, they're pretty close to staying on schedule on offense. The playbook is still open for the coordinator. On second down, here's Gibson again. A one-yard gain there following the three-yard pickup on first down. And the big fella stuffed that one up in a big way. I think doubling him has to be a priority because you can't move up to the next level if you don't take care of him first. The offense on third down, they have been superb. Five for six to this point. This will be third and six. Brissett now. Short pass caught by Henry. And he will have a Patriots first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. As an unbiased observer, I think it would have been interesting to see what they would have done if they hadn't gotten the first down there. But since they did, I guess the point is moved. Yeah, they were right there in that middle ground, field goal range, punt, go for it. But as you said, they picked it up. Shotgun handoff to Gibson. And taking it to the 15-yard line before he's brought down. That good for 19 at a first down. I'm okay with the call there. In fact, I actually like it. I know they're down a couple of scores, but the running game worked in that situation. I would continue to go in that direction. Line of scrimmage, the 15. It's first and 10. Straight ahead at Stevenson. And he'll fight his way down right around the 12. Tackle made there by Jordan Poyer. Sometimes you're aligned perfectly and the play comes to you. And sometimes you got to cover some ground to go make the play as we just saw there. We saw a great, great example of perseverance right there on that play. Got to be careful. They might want to throw one over his head as this game progresses. Throwing on second and eight. Brissett. Now he's got it. Touchdown, Patriots. Jalen Polk, a 12-yard touchdown grab. And the Patriots have cut it back within a score. A nice connection there, finding his target, and that'll put six up on the board. Just like they drew it up in their playbook and reiterated it on the sidelines, right? Perfect route, a good throw in the defense. They had no answer for that right there. Sly on for the extra point. It's up and good. This becomes a 21-14 ball game now. A pretty long drive that time. 11 plays all told. And it ends with a New England touchdown. Joey Sly now to kick off after the touchdown. Oh, a good return up past the 30. 
Jalen Waddle running out, and that means that the Dolphins ready for another drive on offense. He's delivered a solid performance so far here in the second quarter. Everything has been good for him, and right now, if you're on defense, you don't want it to go to great. So you have to just change up coverages and looks on him all the time. Press coverage sometimes, back off and play some man, show some zone, double team him, make him really work for each and every catch. He's hit the end zone once. Maybe there's more in the tank. That one complete to Hill. So the completion good for six yards, and that'll make it second down. Going to the air, Tugamailoa. Throw right side, going to be caught here by Waddle. And taking it across midfield and inside the 45. 17 yards is the pickup there for number 17. So many times in my career I've heard coaches talk about completions are one thing, but as long as we're there at the catch and we get guys on the ground, we can live with that. But if you're going to give up 10, 12, 15 yards after the catch, then your defense is going to be in a lot of trouble. Now a play fake. Here's Tonga Bailoa. Shakes off the sag. But now he's swallowed up and taken down. Multiple players combined for their team's first sack of the game. Well, that's what they have to do more of defensively. Not just getting sacks, but they have to keep getting in his face. Not let him get his feet set and deliver. He's been carving them up previously. Yeah, already has a couple of touchdown passes. About time they put a few grass stains on that jersey. Now, following the sack, they'll look to make amends on a second down and 17. Now, Tua. He'll get this into the hands of Mostert. Call it a gain of six on the play. And that'll bring up a third and 11 situation. And we see another pitch and catch there to the running back. This position just continues to evolve. They become just as critical to the passing attack as a lot of receivers tight ends because their ability to make people miss in the open field can really generate big plays for an offense. That is caught, and he's got another first down as the tackle's going to be made at the Patriots 30. And they'll get 14 yards out of it and a fresh set of downs. So he turned to a trusted, familiar face in that third down situation. It paid off. Yeah, you go to your veteran receiver in that spot, so you can't underestimate him when he's on the field defensively. Make sure you know where he is because he understands how to get open in key situations. And that went to the right side and incomplete. And not a common sight, at least on this drive. A momentary setback, though, for this passing game that has been moving well this series. Good thing for them, though. Still two more downs to connect and try and pick up another first down. Second and ten. Two and a throw again. That's going to be caught by Waddle. He'll get only three there, so it leaves him with a third and seven ahead. And we've seen him have success earlier on with the ball in his hands because he is a get it in space and make a play kind of a receiver. But that time, they closed on him quickly and held him to a short game. This will be the eighth play of the drive. It's third and seven. They fake the handoff. Now Tua. He's got his target. That's complete. And finally, down he goes as they work it inside the 10 to the 7. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. He's such a good route runner. Shows it there on third down. Very proficient and a good pass. And you know what I've observed over the years in the NFL? The better a route runner you are, the more confidence your guy's going to have in you to go to you in important times because he can trust you being in the right spot and they connected there and picked up a first down. Off of play action, Tonga Bailoa. And he's going to have to eat this one as down he goes. Sione Taki Taki. Give him the credit for the sack and a loss of 14 yards. 
Well, there's still time to rectify this situation because the silver lining, they took a sack on first and goal. But that close to the goal line, that still definitely hurts. They've been in the red zone three times in this game and have not scored a single point. Can they break through here on second and goal? They run out of the shotgun with Moster, and he'll be taken down at the 20 after a gain of just one. <laughs> I have to laugh a little bit because he actually handed it off. I thought with the two touchdown passes he's thrown in this one already, He'd go ahead and fling and try and get a third one. Yeah, now from this spot on third down, I think he'd probably throw it here. Yeah, I don't think there's any question about it. They, they won't even send in a running play here, I don't believe. I think they go ahead and try and throw it for a touchdown. They set up the screen. A-chan has it. And he is out of bounds, getting it down to the 10. A gain of nine, not enough, and it's fourth down. And that's a play that's not uncommon on third and long because the offense is just hoping that somehow they can get a guy in space and follow some blockers downfield. Does a pretty nice job there getting a few yards, but he ends up getting stopped before he can get the first down. So fourth down, Tua departs, and on is Jason Sanders and the Dolphin field goal unit. From the right hash here, should be an easy one. Sanders' kick is good, and the lead works its way up to 10, 24-14. So that one on target, and it adds to this first half lead. And maybe we're too early to worry too much about one score lead, two score lead, etc. but this is where you kind of start banking those points that come in helpful later on. After the field goal, here comes Sanders to kick it away. And that's pretty good coverage by the kick team, as he'll only be able to get this past the 15-yard line and no further. The Pats at the line, ready to go. A good balance attack for that last touchdown drive they had. Now it's time to see if they can do that again. It really becomes a tale of two play callers, doesn't it? The offensive guy, he's in sync. Everything is working pretty well for the defense. Yeah, what's going on in the defensive That's side? That's a tough one because he's prepped all week as well, and he can't get a bead on exactly what they're doing right now. What he needs is one of his guys just to make a big play and disrupt things. Any questions of how they'd approach this drive were answered right there. They come out throwing, and they get a nice pickup here toward the end of the first half. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. Brissett sets to throw it. Short pass caught by Henry. It'll go as a gain of four, and it's second down. Oh, it's time to give a little credit there to the defense. They played that very well because it was a drag route, and he ran it a little shallower than normal as he worked straight across the field. He was hoping he'd get lost behind the defensive line, but once he made the catch, nowhere to turn up field and gain any yardage. To throw, Brissad. Right back to Henry, and Henry's got it again. Yeah, that's good for a gain of six. And that's going to make it third down and less than a yard. And there wasn't much room for the big tight end to do much after the catch. But at least he was able to pick up a solid gain to help his offense continue to move in the right direction. Here's third and a few inches. To throw is Brissett. Able to find the open man. That's complete. Now the Patriots will use the second of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over 40 seconds to go in the first half. So from the 17 now, here's a first and 10. Now Brissett. Open man, that's Henry. 
And that's good for a pickup of 10 yards. And that'll leave him with a second and just a few inches left. Brandon, perfect defense in this situation would have meant that there was an incompletion they would have picked it off. Okay, so they gave up the completion. But I really enjoyed watching how the defense stayed in sync, stayed in great communication. And as he dragged across each zone, you see him pointing, communicating. There he is, and they passed him off to each defender. Ended up making a nice play, even though it was complete. First and goal, and they got to be thinking a chance to get right back into this football game. From the shotgun, it's Brissett. Out right to Bourne. Oh, and he's going to be brought down a few yards short of the goal line, and they're going to be unable to stop the clock from here. So close yet so far, and that's going to be how this first half will come to an end. So we've reached halftime here, and it's the visiting Dolphins taking a lead to the locker room. As we'll get you down the coast to Orlando for Jonathan Coachman at REA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. Both of these offenses had their share of high points in that first half. Each team had some big moments, and it would seem this could turn out to be a game where the last score wins. Okay, Coach, thanks as always to you and the gang in Orlando as we welcome everyone back in for quarter number three. The Dolphins in front, and they'll be in possession of the football first as the second half gets started. Now a crease here as he's past the 30. A solid return, pretty good field position. They'll start at the 32. So now out comes this offense led by their quarterback as they take over once more. And as we show you some of the highlights from earlier, he has been instrumental in getting his guys the lead as he looks to finish strong and close this one out. First down Miami as they get set to start the drive. As this offense takes the field to begin the opening drive of the second half, Charles, remember in that first half, good through the air and really all around an outstanding offensive performance. Absolutely. They reached the end zone several times. The passing game working awfully well. And most importantly, partner, yeah, they went to the tunnel with a lead. They come back out with that lead. Absolutely. NFL coaches, we know they're perfectionists in a lot of ways, but they had to like what they saw in that first half. Play action, now it's Tua. That one complete down the field to Smith. And they'll get this well past midfield before being stopped just before the 35. A gain of 28 yards there and give them a first down. And now we get into the psychology of the whole thing because a lot of teams with a two-score lead in the third quarter, they almost become defensive with their offense, just playing not to lose. I think with this team, you got to figure at this point, this is a great spot for them to go into attack mode, really try and put the hammer down and finish this one off. Tua sets up to pass it. It's caught. Back up. And he's going to get this down near the 20-yard line. It's a first down, his fourth catch of the game after having three in the first half. Whatever the discussions were at halftime to try to slow down this offense, it has not worked to this point. Yeah, I have a vision right now of everything that was discussed at the half just being torn in shreds or being erased off of the Microsoft Surface tablets because none of it is working. They are really locked in on offense. And he's going to lose yardage and be backed up to the 25. That's going to go as a loss of four, and it'll be second down. I'll tell you what, this defense hasn't played its best, but they're still right in this football game. And if they keep making plays just like that, they're going to give their offense a chance. They'll have to deal with a second and 14 now after the loss. Here's a toss play right to Mostert. Nice little juke. And they are able to stop him, but he does take it all the way to the two. 
23 yards on the pickup there and a first. Sometimes it's hard to believe, but there are times this game is about patience, isn't it? Has had the game he expected, but that run there, that may get him going. I was just going to say, maybe that gives him a little juice because you're right, he struggled, especially in that first half. Yeah, and I know the great ones always think to themselves, just hang in there. I'm just one big carry away from busting this open. That's a good start for him. Only a yard on the pickup there. Second and goal. Good work there, holding him out on first down. And this is going to be a battle down here on the goal line. Can they hold their ground for two, maybe even three more plays? Second and goal from the one. Laundry on the field. This is going to be a false start on the offense. Sometimes you have to slow things down a little bit when things get heated. The cadence has to be slow and deliberate at times to make sure your team's ready to go. And things made a little more difficult after the false start as they try again on second and goal. Again, they'll run it with Mostert. And he gets halfway there from the six to the three on a gain of three. In the first half, he was held in check on the ground, but despite that lack of production, they still have the lead. Yeah, and they've got to feel fortunate about that. If they could actually get production from their lead horse, that would help open up this offense and widen this margin, too. Big play coming here. It's third and goal. Looking to pass to him. And it's caught. Touchdown, Dolphins. Tyreek Hill on the touchdown pass from Tua. And the Dolphins take the opening kickoff of the third quarter and drive right down the field to extend their lead. That drive that really increased their cushion felt very military to me. Very precise, methodical. That's one of the words you've taught me. And they just got it done. And slowly but surely now, starting to pull away a little bit. Things looking good for them here in the third quarter. Not only pulling away, but you mentioned that slowly but surely. You also drain clock, too, with yep. a drive like that. So you really give yourself an advantage. Extra point up and good by Sanders. And that'll make this a three-score game now. The lead moves to 17. Now after the touchdown, ready to kick it away is Sanders. And they can't bring him down. And he'll go down as this drive will start at the 25-yard line. So here are the Patriots now. They get ready for their first possession of half number two. The drive starts with a carry by Stevenson. And he will lose yardage here back at the 23-yard line. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. You've got to figure the further they fall behind, the more you think that they'll get away from the run. They're trying to stick with it, but the results, they just aren't there. A loss of a yard there to start out. That leads to a second and 11. Up the middle, here's Stevenson. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. That one good for 13 and a New England first down. Defensively, they were in the 3-4, and that O-line just dominated the D-line there. Let's go with a verbal telestrator here, because that D-line has a nose over the center, and it has the two defensive ends over the offensive tackles. That means the guards don't have anyone over the top of them. That creates a natural bubble inside where they sprint upfield, take on the inside linebackers. And if the back hits it fast enough, there should be space to run. I feel like I could see what he was thinking on that carry. He wanted to follow that big tackle through the hole. Ended up only getting four yards on the carry. I think he had designs on that one being bigger. Brissett. They'll set up the screen for Gibson. And he's able to get this one out closer to midfield across the 45. Boy, that was certainly well-read defensively. And the key to any screenplay, 
is space to work, and there was none to be found there, and they tackle it for just a short gain. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. In motion, the tight end. So they'll go ahead and accept the penalty. Still third down. Bad time to get a delay of game penalty there. Not that there's a good time, but that makes it third and six. Here's Brissett. Back to Gibson and another catch for him. And he's able to get this one out closer to midfield across the 45. Able to get what they need to keep the drive going with a six-yard pickup on third down. Another catch for him there on this drive, Brandon. And it looks like they're going to utilize him out of the backfield any way they can. And that time, they pick up a first down. So now on defense, do you assign a man to him and try and cover him before he gets going? Well, they'll run it here on the jet sweep. And that is well read there defensively. He was looking to use his speed to get the edge, but they said no way. Two yards, the loss, second and 12. Well, as a wide out, when you take that handoff and you're coming around the edge, you're expecting to see nothing but empty space in front of you. But if not... Well, things can go south in a hurry, and that's exactly what we saw on that play with a loss. To the right side, this is Stevenson. And he's across midfield and into Miami territory. He gets them a little over half of what they needed. Now they're looking at a third and five. Not too many offenses want to turn down long drives, but when you're down what they are, they've got to pay it off with some points. And on third and five, this will be the eighth play of the drive. Here's Brissett. This one to Bourne out on the left side. And oh, he's just going to be short here, barely. Maybe by a half a foot. It'll be fourth and inches. Well, it looks like they got what they wanted. They got the completion, but they weren't able to break any tackles or gain nearly enough yardage to pick up the first down. Now to be fourth and short. The Patriots send out their punter as he'll kick it away for the second time. And this one hits at the three and then bounds into the end zone for a touchback. The Dolphins offense now working their way back onto the field. And as we look back at how we got here, you'll notice a common theme in these highlights. A lot of yardage through the air. The passing game has been sharp right from the outset. The Dolphins at the line ready for their next drive. This drive here beginning probably with a pair of motivated groups. Remember the offense scored a touchdown on their last time out looking to repeat that in Charles's defense. They were very frustrated after giving up six the last time on the field. And frankly, it's just a battle of wills in a lot of ways because you know they're both motivated. They both game plan for this drive and they both have specific outcomes in mind. To me, it just comes down to who can execute better and which side can step up and assert its will over the other. Two are going to throw. And he's taken down. Back at his own seven. Dietrich Wise running through and dropping him for the sack. Okay, I'm not sure you could actually draw up a better pass rush than that one right there. Nowhere to go outside. He had to keep backing up and backing up and backing up. Eventually dropped for a huge loss. So now after the sack, Tua and the Dolphins staring at a third and long. Throwing now is Chungavailoa. He'll let it go deep for Beckham. And this will be caught at the 30. It's a big play there for Miami. 63 yards. Boy, this has just been an offensive clinic. It's seemingly been one big play after another, after another. 
and add this one on to the list. When you can bite off more than half the field on one play, <laughs> things are definitely working in your favor. So how about this for a change in field position? From inside the 10, here's first down on the other side of the field. On play action, here's Tua. Nice work to get seven out of that, and it's second down. Oh, partner, just a second earlier, and they might have had him because they certainly thought they were going to close in and drop him behind the line of scrimmage, but he had just enough time to dodge the pressure, and he ends up getting yardage before being stopped. From the 24 now, here's second down and three. Now a play fake. Here's Tonga Bailoa. That's going to be knocked away and incomplete. To give you an idea of how accurate he's been throwing the football, we're in the second half. That's just his second incompletion. Well, if he's that locked in, that means everyone's locked in because to me it's like throwing a no-hitter in baseball. The pitcher may get the credit, but a lot of people making plays behind him in the field. In motion, Hill. Now Tua. And this one is incomplete. Back-to-back -back incompletions of what was once a nice drive. Stalled out here. I'm going to give credit to the secondary partner. Never gave up as they gave up a few yards, and they came through on that play to deny that pass and force the fourth down. Sanders' kick is good, and the Dolphins will add on to their lead. So three more points tacked on, and this margin getting more comfortable by the minute. And with the lead where it is, you can actually feel good about field goals. We talk all the time about scoring sixes, not threes. But in this case, they're just looking to chew up some time and come away with points. After the field goal, here comes Sanders to kick it away. And a good effort on the return there. Gets him across the 30, up to the 33. Well, the Patriot offense back out, getting set to go. I kind of feel like they've reached a do-or-die point in this game, Charles. If they're going to try to pull off an impressive comeback, it has to start right here, right now. Yeah, now they've got a final chance to get out of this situation, but they also understand they've got to move the ball and move it fast. In addition, they need to save as much time so they can get two more possessions. They'll start on the ground with Gibson. And they're going to stop him right at the line of scrimmage. Just no cutback lane to be found whatsoever. Second and ten. Looked like he was trying to bounce it outside, but no success. Yeah, sometimes you got to just figure out where you're going to go. And sometimes you just have to take it to another spot. And trying to get it outside, the defensive pursuit was there and just ran him down. Out of the gun, Brissett. Short pass caught by Henry. They get seven out of that, so they're left with a third and three. Let's not quibble about the game there on second down. That was a positive play because that was a take-what-you-can-get situation. Got out to the tight end. Now it gives them a much better opportunity to convert on third down. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Throwing. Brissett. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he will have a Patriots first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Pretty good location there on that throw. It really was, wasn't it? That was likely one where the receiver was either going to catch it or no one. Really good decision. And boy, what a catch and move right there. And a tough spot to get it over the middle. And this complete to Henry over the middle. And he'll be brought down on what's going to turn out to be the final play of this third quarter. Three quarters have come and gone. You are watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now in Foxborough. It's Patriot football, but they trail here as we begin the fourth quarter. 
Brissan. And he takes a shot on the release as this will be incomplete. What we just saw there, that's really been a common theme all afternoon. A lot of pressure. That forced the errant pass. He's been under duress this entire afternoon. He just had to unload that when he's fortunate. It was just incomplete and not intercepted. They tried to throw on second down, unsuccessful. Now it's third and one. Again, it's Brissan. Open man is born. Man, he'll go out of bounds after taking it a little further down inside the 40. Eighth catch for him now. He's been a big factor. And it's a first down. Going old reliable there to the slot on third down. And the slot position has become the bane of just about every defense's existence because how do you cover? Do you go with a bigger guy to try and use size? Can I go with a, try go with a quicker guy and sometimes even get out quick there? Very difficult to match up with that slot receiver. That's why they keep going back to him. And he's had the hot hand. So the completion results there in nine yards. And it'll bring up a second and short. At this point, down big, you'd have to imagine this defense are just going to sit back, blanket the field as best they can. Yeah, this is actually the easy part of the game for them because, just as you noted, they can sit back, keep everything in front of them. But they've blanketed the field the entire game using a variety of coverages. They'll look to make it three for three on third down conversions. They need a yard here. They'll run with Gibson. What a great effort there. He's going to get this inside the 15, and they'll spot it at the 13-yard line. Nice run. 44 yards now on the ground on just seven carries. Brandon, what were they thinking on defense there? That looked like they were playing for the pass. That was third and short. Yeah, it was an easy pickup because they handed it to him. That was way too easy. Just looked like absolute confusion defensively. Not sure why they were in that set. Yeah, I'd say you ought to have a few men in the box there. Got a man, and he hits him in stride. And he'll take it into the end zone for a Patriot touchdown. Kendrick Bourne, his second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Patriots have got it back to a two-score game here in the fourth. So a little bit of a letdown there defensively. I mean, look, you're still two scores to the good, CD, but things may be a little more uncomfortable than they had hoped. Yeah, if you'd kept him out of the end zone there, this game's over. You've locked the door on them. Instead, it's still open a little bit, and they've got a puncher's chance. Now Joey Sly for the point after. And that will cut this lead down to 13. So that one, a pretty time-consuming 10-play drive. And it was Kendrick Bourne who was able to cap things off with a touchdown. Joey Sly now to kick off after the touchdown. And they will wrangle him down a couple yards shy of the 30. First down Miami as they get set to start the drive. Now there are two scores on the plus side. Still time here in this fourth quarter, but maybe you start thinking about playing keep away? Yeah, I think here's the situation. You're not thinking touchdowns anymore. You're just thinking first downs to keep up with your theme there, playing keep away. First downs, they can't touch the ball. Give them 13 yards on the opening play of the drive and also give them a first down.
Going to the air. Tonga Bailoa. He'll get this into the hands of Mostert. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. A Miami first down, that one going for a gain of 11. Partner, I like that they're staying aggressive on offense because to me, this drive is what is known as a put-away drive. You score here, that might put this one to bed. I like the fact that they're playing with confidence and not playing with fear. Waddle, the motion man right. On first and 10, it's Mostert. Taken down at the 47-yard line. Brandon, I've got to think this offensive line has got some smiles on its faces. And, and I know it sounds crazy, but they practiced for this back in training camp. They knew they'd be in situations where it'd be extra defenders in the box coming after them, trying to keep them from locking down a game. Right now, they want to show the world they're up to the challenge. Here's Tua. Open man downfield is Waddle. He's got it. And all the way down to the seven-yard line. It's a big play there for Miami, and even 40 yards. And this is seemingly how it's been all game long. This defense has been just a step too slow. And here they're burned again. Another big play. Now a chance to make that big play really hurt. It's first and goal just outside the five. Now Tua on the bootleg here. Getting this out to the flat, Mostert. And he will take it in for a Dolphins touchdown. Raheem Mostert, a seven-yard touchdown grab. And the Dolphins have pretty well put it away here in the fourth quarter. Yeah, that's a nice play design right there. He's going to fake the give, then roll out. And he lets his back leak out toward the pylon. And how about the throw? Right where he needed it to be for him to catch it in stride, he's able to take it into the end zone. Tua and the Dolphins offense stay in put. They'll go for two. The two are going to try and throw for it. And this one incomplete. So they went for the two. They don't get it. Should have been picked. Probably doesn't matter on a two-point conversion. But still, as a former DB, you want to grab that ball when you can, don't you? You certainly do. And, and don't say it, because I know you're thinking it. Don't say it. <laughs> what am I thinking? You know what I'm, I know what you're thinking. Well, if he'd had hands, he'd be playing on offense, right? Ah, that's true. You've said that before. Now after the touchdown, ready to kick it away is Sanders. And the tackle going to be made right there at the 25-yard line. The Patriots offense now, they work their way back onto the field. Well, this game, it has had no shortage of offense. They've been able to put up a decent amount of points on this side, Charles. They just have not been able to keep pace with the other offense they're going against here. Yeah, that's a good way of pointing things out because now it's not a total loss because, as you said, they've scored some points, so there's some plays they can build on, moments where the game plan actually worked. But overall, though, they were just out personnel. They were going up against a team that's playing at an elite level. So just three yards on the completion there, and it's second down. You got the big lead defensively, willing to give them that underneath stuff, right? And this is why you work on your tackling. Tackle them after the catch, inbounds, keep the clock running. Just go ahead and bleed the game out that way. And they'll come up on a second and seven from the 27. To throw, Brissad. I think this is what this game's become now. It just go deep, see if we can get something to go our way. Yeah, not the most creative or most inventive play call there, but not much has worked for them throughout this game. They're almost at a loss about what to dial up. They head to the line facing a third and seven following the incompletion on second down. Now Brissett. The Dolphins get there this time and they bring him down. He couldn't get away there on third down. The pressure too much and he's sacked for a loss of 12. 
Sealer does a nice job of breaking through the offensive line and getting home, and he continues to be an underrated pass rusher from his interior spot, quietly racking up 10 sacks a season ago. The Patriots send out their punter. As the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. And here comes Berrios. Call that a 44-yard punt, five on the return. And it'll be Dolphin football. The Dolphins at the line ready for their next drive. Well, the win for them at this point seems pretty assured. I mean, still a decent amount of time left here in the fourth quarter, Charles, but you got the football, you're up three scores. They have to be feeling really good about where they're at. I love your observation skills, partner, because I think you saw them charge onto the field, fired up about another chance to get into the end zone. Looks to me like this group is ready to crush any hope left on the opposing sideline, and they want to do it with some gusto, too. Second down, here's Mostert again. And a solid run here as he'll pick his way down to the 42-yard line. 46 yards rushing for him now as he's run it 11 times. It's always been funny to me, Brandon, when coaches always talk about on hot days like the one we have here, oh, it's hot for both teams. But when one team has the advantage, when one team is running the ball really well and closing things out, it's hotter for the defensive side, and they sag a lot quicker. Yeah, they say the dog days of August, the heat we're seeing here today, dog days of September, and the advantage right now on the offensive side. So following the hold, they're in a bit of a hole here with a first and 20. Once again, it's Mostert, and this will be stopped at the 44. That one good for seven yards. Now I'm guessing you'd say this is kind of the key here. Grind out some yardage, work on that clock, see if you can continue to tick it down. Definitely, you want to bleed things out at this point, right? Continue to possess the football, gain some yardage, and put the onus on the defense. Do they have to use timeouts? What are they going to do to stop you? You're taking charge. A run with Mostert up the middle. Broke through some contact, but unable to reach the 40. Two yards gets them back to where they started, but now third and ten. He's definitely tough to get down. We just saw it right there, but how about what we did see? Pursuit, wrap up, and then the big finish with the tackle. New England on third down. They've been very good, five for seven thus far. This is third and ten. Here's Mostert, toss left side. And he can only manage to take this thing to the 38, well shy of the first down. Four yards on the pickup there, but it's going to take him to fourth down. The Dolphins will send out the punter now, as he should be able to pin him back deep here with his first punt. This one angles out of bounds in a good spot in the coffin corner. And they're going to mark this out of the five-yard line. The Pats offense and Kendrick Bourne headed back onto the field. And he's had some kind of game. They made it a point to get him involved early. And it has paid giant rewards to this stage of the game. New England with a first down as they begin the drive. Even though they were able to force the punt defensively, still a big hole to climb out of, especially at this late stage of the contest. So give them five yards there on the pitch and catch, and that will bring up second down. They gave up the completion there, but this is what zone defenses count on, catching the ball and not much run after the catch. Now second and five.
Brissett now. That's Bourne. Got it on the slant. And they'll bring him down here right around the 17-yard line. He's up to 87 yards receiving now, and it's a first down. And he's certainly been a huge factor in this when he's got the two touchdowns to his credit. Now they look to him again. He picks up the first. Yeah, I can hear everyone saying, well, why don't you cover him? Double him, triple him, do what you have to do. But sometimes they get locked into such a groove and such a connection, it doesn't matter how many guys are in his area. He certainly looks to be in that groove right now. And he'll be corralled right around the 34. The catch and run, good for 18 and a first down. A three-score game here late. You can probably rule out the comeback, but certainly some kind of a moral victory to be had if they can get a few more points to close things out. And to that end, a nice pass play there to push things downfield. Yeah, and we know in this league, a loss is a loss, and no one wants anything to count as a moral victory or, boy, something that feels a little bit cheap. But if they trim that lead down to just two scores, that's still a benefit to this squad. I like how he hung in there and went through his progressions, but eventually his internal clock went off and told him it was time to make a run for it, and he ends up sliding down with a solid gain. To throw is Brissett. He'll check that down to Gibson out of the backfield, and he'll be taken down at the 46-yard line. Six yards to pick up, and that's a first down. Continuing to steadily move the ball down the field. Not big play after big play, but these moderate gains getting them first downs. And you know what they add up to, right? If you continue that pace and you continue to move it downfield, they add up into six points. That's exactly what you're looking for. And the Dolphins rush gets home. Down he goes. Calais Campbell finding his way home for the sack. Two minutes left to play in this football game here on EA Sports. So the Patriots with the football as we get you reset. They're looking at second down now as they search for a consolation score. Throwing on second and long. Brissett. Short pass caught by Henry. And he's able to get this one out closer to midfield across the 45. Uh, coaches always harp on the quarterback reading the defense and getting it to the open man. That's good recognition there. And how about what he did after the catch? Yeah, hit your tight end. Let him get some rack. Yeah, when he, when he gets moving, not many guys want to come over and put a hit on him, do they? Brissett sets to throw it. Oh, he had him. He was open, but he couldn't get it to him. It's incomplete. Well, he's smart enough to avoid the taunting rule, but I'll guarantee he quietly has told them, you might want to stop coming after me downfield because I just broke up another pass and took away a big shot that you were trying to succeed with. All right, they're going to try and keep hope alive here on fourth down. They're going for it. Pass to the sideline and pulled in. And he'll be out just a yard or two shy of the 30. Uh, no reason not to try it there, and they do indeed convert on fourth. Fourth down trailing in the fourth quarter. They felt compelled to go for it, and they got it. Well, I'd look down at my play sheet, and what I would find, plays that have been successful throughout the game that have worked at the distance you need, and that's exactly what they got done. Over the middle, and it's incomplete. Well, the trials and tribulations of being a quarterback in this league, it's tough. It's got to be wearing on him out there. Well, he has been sacked a number of times. He had an interception, so I'm going to give him a skosh of credit for hanging in there and trying to make something happen, despite the amount of pressure he's been under this entire game. Brissett again. Now a quick throw there, but it's going to be incomplete. Well, what looked like a march to the end zone has hit a momentary roadblock with that incompletion. No need to panic. They just got to come up with a high percentage play call and see if they can get their offense back on track. This offense was on the move. Now two straight incompletions have them looking at third and ten. From the shotgun, it's Brissett. And that's going to be incomplete. The contact there enough to jar that ball free, and it brings up fourth down. From a defensive perspective, they had exactly what you want anytime they want to throw the football. There was pressure on the quarterback. They were getting after him, and they tightened down on the receivers and forced the incompletion. Brissett to throw for it on fourth. 
And it's incomplete. They cannot convert, and they turn it over. They had to go for it with such little time remaining, and this long drive is going to wind up yielding nothing. So they tried to go for it for pride, but it really wouldn't have mattered. This one, it was already determined. No doubt about it. This one was over a while ago. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. They'll run. Here's Devon Achan. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. Juwan Bentley there to get him down. This defense, tough to run against. And those linebackers, they'll go side to side up the field, and there they get him for no gain. If you can't get linemen upfield to the second level to occupy them, they have a field day just running to the football and putting ball carriers on the ground. Not many yards after contact when they wrap up like that. They go back to the ground, this time Moster. He'll get only three there, so it leaves him with a third and seven ahead. Sometimes your philosophies get challenged at times you don't want them to. They did try to stick to the running game on the first two plays. Didn't amount to much. And now facing a third and long at the outset of this drive. Now third down and seven. They'll stay on the ground with Mostert. And they're going to mark him down short, maybe by about a yard, if that. So a victory here for the Miami Dolphins. And maybe more importantly, a victory in the division, which always helps. And on the road. How about all of that rolled up into one? Because how often do you see division games get decided by this much of a margin? Most yeah, they time thumped in, them. Yeah, they jumped all over them. In a division game, it's usually a touchdown or less because these two teams know each other better than most teams in the league. In this case, that didn't hold up. On the road, big margin, big victory. Oh, yeah, that flight home will be good. So that'll do it for us, for my partner, Charles Davis, and all the hardworking men and women on our crew. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL right here on EA Sports. And with that, we say so long from Foxborough.